Welcome back, everybody. Hi. I'm Jamie. I'm Justina. And this is Just So You Know. How the hell are you, girl? I'm tired. Yeah. I'm tired. She says that every episode. Yeah. You work too hard, honey. I cry too hard. I cry too hard. That's the problem. Well, today was actually a really heartwarming day. It was. It was a very informative day. Like, Jamie and I, we were we were just leaving said place. And for whatever reason, Jamie has a bird art. And if you don't know <laughs> what bird art is, Jamie knows when there is a bird in need. She just instantly knew that out of the hundreds of pigeons everywhere, this one pigeon in the corner was hurt. I'm like, this pigeon can't fly. And I was like, she's like, give me a box. She's like, go find a box. I was like, uh. I was like, here's my bag. She's like, give me your bag. Bird police, put your hands where I can see them. Literally, and she picked up the pigeon, and that's a telltale sign that something is wrong. Well, like, I said, Justina, give me your bag. <laughs> she, I was like, <laughs> I was like, give me a second. Let me take everything out of the bag, first of all. My charger, my sweater. So we performed said rescue. Yes. He was hanging out at Herald Square waiting to go shopping in Macy's. Macy's. Mm -hmm. And like, not today, buddy. You got to learn to fly first. Yeah, so little Ronald is safe now. He oh, his is name is Ronald? I just came up with that now. I okay, thought cool. maybe cute. I don't know. No? I mean, it's your bird. What do you have against Ronald's? It doesn't work for me. Ronald, he was a little bit of a character. I don't know. That's okay. what comes to mind. Hey, intuition. Okay, I'll do me. Yeah. Anyway, we went to lunch after, and then we came here, and so that was our morning. My question to you, Justina, is: Have you seen any good movies lately? I movie specifically. Yeah. Uh, Saltburn. You watched that? Hell yeah, I watched that. All I know from Saltburn is There's that somebody's on the getting dance murdered floor. on the dance floor. Listen, the, the, in the beginning of that movie, I was kind of like, what's going on here? Like, okay. And then the acting is just so impeccable that I was very intrigued. And then it just throws you the heck off. And then by the end of the movie, your mouth is on the floor and you're like, wow, this was don't, a piece. don't give away the ending. I just said your mom is going to be on the floor. Now That's I don't it. have to watch it. You definitely have to watch it. So Justina, being an actress herself and an acting coach, mm -hmm. you know good acting. Yeah. When, it, when, when a film is good, I'm like engrossed in it. I'm like taken away and, I, and I'm just like in the world. Did you by any chance happen to get to the end credits section? No. I mean, probably, but... Uh, if I'm not in the movie theaters, I'm probably not paying attention to the end credits. That's so bad, but everything is, in, is important in the end credits, Did for sure. Did you happen to see a phrase that, that said no animals were harmed in the making of this movie? Not in this particular movie. And I okay. honestly, I didn't even know that was during the end credits. I didn't know that. Okay, well, that's a fact that you now learned. Thank you, Jamie. You're welcome. What are some things that you know about movies? Maybe some animal actors. What do you got going on? Tell me. You're in that world, so. Well, I definitely knew my worlds were always like this. When I watched Free Willy, I remember being like, oh, no, we got a Free Willy. And uh -huh. when I finally went to SeaWorld, I was like, what the heck? Why do they make this movie if, like, this shit is still happening? But the really? thing that I've noticed is that in the movies, you think the animals are splashing around. They look like they're having fun. And then, it, as you said, you go to the SeaWorld and you're like, oh, this is not what I thought it was. Right, right. Okay, interesting. Well, some of just, you know, movies that I really love with animals in them, because who doesn't? I right. love Bruiser from Legally Blonde. Aw, Bruiser. Come on. He's cutie pie. The he's a good chihuahua. boy. Yeah, he's like, what? Yeah. So cutie cute. Pie. And he just, like, he plays the part he so well. just glows. Gorgeous. There was, uh, ooh. Look Who's Talking, Look Who's Talking 3. I, was, I grew up watching Look Who's Talking because I used oh. to be obsessed with John Travolta and Look Who's Talking 3, they have two dogs and they mm. do voiceover over the dogs. Why do you think John Travolta's hot or? I used to think John Travolta was hot, really? but John Travolta is a triple threat. He could dance, sing, act. So if you can dance, sing, act, you got my attention. Okay. Bust the moves. Older man, okay. Uh, it's not about that. It's love, about the talent. Love Mr. Bigglesworth from Austin Powers. The little, <laughs> the hairless, the, the hairless cat. cat. Oh. He's like mm. this one. 
you with Dr. the Doctor Evil, Evil. With, yeah. his little pinky in his mouth. Okay. <laughs> Oh, Aww. ooh, Max. Max from the Grinch stole Christmas. Oh, he was a he was a rescue, I believe. Mm-hmm. He was a dog rescue. Love him. Yes. Yeah. Apparently, he was him. played by six dogs. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I thought it was just the one. No. Liars. <sighs> they oh. lied to us. Okay, Princess Diaries. Fat Lou, the cat. I don't remember that one. That's actually played by Anne Hathaway's cat. Aww. So that I'm kind of okay with, actually. I've always wanted to have, like, a movie or a TV show with yeah. an animal. Just because I'm like, dream role, dream role. I get to, like, have my co-star be an animal, you mm-hmm. know? No, I know. I, 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 I would have wanted that, too. Whoa, Mm-mm. relax. Don't come but, at me. But. Already, I didn't say <laughs> anything wrong. I'm just saying, like, I used to love... The idea of acting with an animal. But they do say don't act with animals and children because they will upstage you. They will be very, very honest mm-hmm. about what's going on. Well, they become the the talk of the town. Yeah, and they're the star. Yeah, you're like Justina Adorno who? I'd be like, yeah, don't I'm, worry about me. I'm also right. cutie pie. I mean, come on. They're so adorable. So you got all these different animals in movies. They're so cute. Another fact about movies is that... Now, being a vegan and an animal rights person, I find it hard to watch movies with animals in them because I worry that the dog's going to, like, die at the end or something atrocious is going to happen to them, right? Right. I re- like, I forgot what the movie was called. It was, like, Far far Away From Home or something with, like, the cat and the dog. Like, I don't I, – I can't remember what happens, but I remember I think there was, like, some sort of river scene mm-hmm. and, like, one of the animals was, like, panicking and I remember – I used to love watching films that yeah. had animals, but my mom hated it because I would have freakouts uh-huh. because I was just like, oh no, it looks it looks so real. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I'm like, oh, I don't like this. Or if there's like a war movie with like horses, oh. I'm like, wait a minute. These explosives are, they're not real real, but they're real and they're loud. But doesn't you know? it say that no animals were harmed in the making of this movie? Right, but, I mean, movie magic, they could lie to you, that's for sure. Well, I will explain in a little bit. Oh, Lord. Well, it's, as, you know, when I look at these movies, like, even in Mean Girls, you know, the the scene with the mom who has, like, the huge fake boobs and the <laughs> nipples are, like, iron fucking, like, swords pointing yeah. out. And the dog like bites onto on on one it. of the boobs. I'm like, oh, my God, is he okay? Uh, you were thinking about him? <laughs> You're like, the dog, not the nipple. I'm like, oh, my God. Is the little pup okay? The little chihuahua? You know what's something else I know about movies and stuff uh, when it comes to animals? Oh, my God. The first time I went, I was excited because anything with animals, I get like a, a child. We know. Yes, we know this. Uh, but I believe it is in Universal Studios. There's like, there's this little um, live action like, Hollywood pets or Hollywood animals and like they have like the birds and like the bunnies and like a hawk and dogs and cats and I at first I was like oh my god they're so cute and like they'll tell you like oh you could have seen so and so in this movie and then I was like are they lying are they just like replacing these animals saying that they've been in these movies but they do a whole performance act at Universal Studios it's a real it's a it's real animals real animals on stage they do a show and like they jump like they jump over things they go into little baskets that fly into the sky which release other things and little mice run across and then the cat's like doing a little crawl like the second time I was like whoa can't be good I was like I don't like this because you could see some of them they were resisting they didn't want to and like the handlers seemed like nice and chill in front of us but i'm like where do they go are they like in cages back here Mm. they call them like hollywood stars but like are they are they in cages do they have homes right are they getting paid millions of dollars can they retire no yeah oh god i don't like that at all yeah it's really it's actually disturbing the second time i went i was you went two times (laughs) yes because i was excited just to see them they were gonna play the they were gonna have the show regardless and I was with somebody else. This is not a good justification. Listen, I'm just telling you because that's what p- people usually do, right? They're like, oh, we get to see little animals. They're so cute. But I'm telling you, the second time I watched it, I was starting to see the 
the fourth wall be broken. Right. No, I mean, you start to see throughout history how even with the invention of the the camera for photographs and then the invention of TV and, and movies and film, you start to see how over time we have used animals in film. And a lot of the time it's because people love animals. Right. Animals are a part of our society. Yeah. And so throughout history, you start to see 1879, there was the... Zoopraxiscope is what it was called. It's the invention of this these series of photos where you see a horse galloping. Mm, so okay. that was the first animal that you saw on actual film. Okay, okay. And then you start to see how more movies are getting made and they're using animals. Now to recreate some scenes, <clears throat> animals got hurt in the process. Yeah. And some notable Horrible. stories and movies are Ben Hur, where over a hundred horses were shot and killed for the movie. Oh my God! I think I heard that. I didn't know the title of the movie because mm-hmm. it was for the action of the film, right? Yeah, like that was actually happening. Mm-hmm. There was a 1939 what Western film that was called Jesse James, and they sent a horse over a 70 foot cliff to get a shot. Violently killed. Oh, no. They so, sacrificed him for the shot, basically? Uh, yeah, I guess that's what you can call it. I guess, yeah, I guess that's what animal sacrifice is. They did that back in the day where they pushed sheep that's and crazy. over the cliff. Oh, no. So that leads us into what this episode is about and the formation of the American Humane Association, which is now called American Humane. And what okay. the AH or AH now is, is it's it it once was a organization that monitored films to protect animals. Right. And they actually had to fight to get onto these sets to regulate the treatment of animals and what wow. was happening. And that's messed up that we even have to do that, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, duh, do, <laughs> does yep. someone else have to tell you that it's wrong to throw a horse off of a cliff t- to get a shot? It's right. insane. Right, right. Yeah, I, you would think, right? It seems like common sense. But the first use of, you know, the iconic term, no animals were harmed in the making, that mm. formed in 1972. And it was uh, used because it, there was an animal trainer who uses job dogs to rob banks. And it was called the Doberman Gang. And that oh was when God. that slogan formed. And, I mean, I've used it a million times. You know, in TikToks, I'll do a TikTok with my dog. There was one in particular where you had to, like, bite a noodle and, like, pretend to be crunching off their ear to <laughs> see how they would react. <laughs> and my dog just, like, looked up because she saw, like, in the camera of my phone that I was, like, biting her ear and then the 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 sound, the sound of matched. the crunch yeah. yeah and she just like looked up Aww. and then i wrote no animals were harmed in the making of this i mean it was cute I, right I, everyone knows no animals were harmed right yeah. of course and i'm obsessed with my dog adore her love her but Sheedy we've boy. all used this term it became like an I- iconic saying right and then you start to see over time there's still abuse happening in these industries there's o- only so much you know the american humane association could control and and not every movie had them come on set right Mm. so in 1980 the american humane association which is what it was called at the time they were blocked from monitoring a film called heaven's gate and animals were actually deliberately killed this movie heaven's gate in 1980 actually led to more involvement of the american humane and the saying no animals were harmed in the making and so i think at first the AHA, they had good intentions. You know, the right. idea was to protect. to protect. It's kind of like a union, right? It was almost like a union for the animals. I guess you could say that. Mm. But then things started to go down. It always works like that. The union tries to act like they're protecting you. And then ultimately, they don't give a cluck, which is mm. true. I'll, I'll, I'll close my mouth right there when it comes to that. So Wow. Okay, so they're <sighs> traitors. Well, the AHA, the American Humane, which once was an outside entity that would go onto sets and literally fight for their right to independently monitor productions in the first place, right. today has transformed itself to, I want to say, an industry insider. And I'm going to tell you why. What do you mean? So, 
like with many things, money, 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 money. And who's in bed with who and who gets what. And right. so ugh, the problem here, just as overarching, is that American Humane's No Animals Were Harmed in the Making slogan, it's a total sham. And it literally deceives viewers into thinking that animals in TV are treated well. Right. And I want to give you guys examples today because I want you to make your own informed decision as to whether you think that we should be believing this in the first place. That sucks. Another thing for us to have to worry about. It sounds just like every single time it's it's the system just lying to us. Like we can't trust anything. We have to do further investigation. Mm -hmm. I know. It sounds like that with a lot, a lot of things. So <laughs> let's start from the beginning. So we start to see things going downhill a little bit. Okay. So we saw that things were going to be ramped up with the with the American Humane, where they were really going to get in there and have to monitor sets mm -hmm. to see how animals were being treated on television right. and in films and movies. And in 1987, you got Bob Barker, love him, for speaking up about cruelty on set of Matthew Broderick's Project X. So he actually came out and he said, I don't like what's going on here with animals. And he was sued for libel. Mm, that is the tricky part. That's crazy. I've never seen that movie. No, I haven't either. No, I mean, and, but that's just an example of like somebody trying to speak up and say, wait. They shut you the fuck up. They're like, oh, yeah. We're going to sue you. And Bob, he said at the time, he goes, I would like to see all animals out of entertainment. But of course, that's not going to happen overnight. So we must provide the protection for these poor creatures that are exploited for man's entertainment. Dang, he must have seen some really crazy shit for him to be like, uh, heck no. Right. This was not just a dog that didn't want to do something and was maybe like deprived treats or something this right. was probably an abuse case oh no that he's speaking up about so we start to see little things like that in 2001 the la times actually raised alarms and they said that the american humane was too cozy for studios it had been monitoring so what does that mean what, do what you does mean? that mean too cozy for studios like they weren't doing their job well i think it's starting to, to say that Maybe the American Humane was becoming a little too tight with the directors and with the productions, so they would kind of zip it when it came to speaking up about what was happening to the animals to get the film made. So what the heck is the point of having them? What's the point of their existence if they're not going to do the job that they said they were going to do? I mean, that is the question, right? That is the question that we're going to get into. It makes no sense. So let's talk about some of the AHA-approved films Okay. <laughs> and let's talk through maybe, well, how or why were they improved? So you got 27 animals died during the filming of The Hobbit. And that was AHA approved. Wow. You got The Life of Pi. There was a tiger yes! on set. He almost drowned. Oh. There was an exposed email. Oh, no. From I thought that was a fake tiger. Parts of it were using fake tigers, but there was a real tiger used in a few of the scenes. And wow. there was an exposed or leaked email from a rep from the American Humane saying, oh shit, like this tiger almost died. And <gasps> another guy being like, don't say anything about it. And it was leaked. Wow. And so that is pretty recent. And then you got uh, no. dozens of fish and squid were, were exploded basically on uh, the set of the Pirates of the Caribbean. Fuck. That was AHA approved. There was a giraffe that was choked to death. No. On the, the film Zookeeper, which I loved. Zookeeper. It was so cute. It was like oh, a, it was a film. It was a dad supposed to be daughter. like a sanctuary kind of vibe? And that's what I felt. And then you got the do a dog's purpose. That, oh, did you see that? No, my mom told me not to watch it. She was just, you know, don't watch it. You're going to be crying like crazy. So I didn't. Well, there was a dog that was forced to dr jump into this really fast running stream of water oh, no. and he didn't want to do it and there was a viral video that leaked showing how fearful the dog was to go into that i mean these are animals they don't know that they're acting in a movie here's the really weird part with american humane i mean they are they have reps that go on set for what that 
they only go on set for a few hours and sometimes productions will specifically request certain reps from the American Humane because they know that they're more lenient or relaxed. Shady, and shady, shady. They only account for when the cameras are rolling. So whatever <gasps> happens to the animals when they're kept in their kennels or when they're not actually filming, they're not responsible, not responsible. for talking about it. Wow, that is so messed up. And that's super vital. Yeah. Because when if we're talking about human rights and like what happens with us and what's right and what's wrong, it doesn't matter if it's happening before or after the camera is rolling. If you are on set and something bad happens mm -hmm. to you, you, that needs to be reported. Yeah, I mean, you're taking wild animals like tigers and you're trying to make them do shit. That, I'm sorry, but... Horrible. Putting a dog in a car or locked in a room like they did in The Hangover. Sorry, putting a tiger in a dog Aww. or a car like The Hangover. There is really no right way to do that, in my opinion. Yeah, there really is no you right way tell, to do it. You can't tell the, the, the tiger, hey, you're going to be really famous one day. Yeah. People are going to know you. Yeah, but just so you know, like, no one's going to hurt you. We're all good. When they're screaming and freaking out, chill. Right. Right, these guys are running around like naked. And then, and then the poor there was a animal. penis in the Hangover movie, right? They're running around naked. What does that have to do with anything? I just it came to mind. So a wild animal like that. <laughs> but there was a as penis. I was saying, no penises were harmed in this movie. No, no penises were, but tigers were harmed. That's so sad. So the a the American Humane's problems, guys, they really start at the top. So you got the CEO. He's making seven hundred thousand dollars a year. How? Motherfucker. How? Because it's corrupt. He's making a shit ton of money. So and they make a company, they don't do what they say, and they still get paid. Sorry. The vice president, the right Jack Hubbard is his name, he's actually known for attacking animal rights, environmental protection groups, and other humane organizations prior to his employment at American Humane. Buddy, I think you're in the wrong business. I was reading the Hollywood Insider article, which kind of basically outed the American Humane for mm -hmm. their corruption. And it even said certain reps from American Humane like to party it up with these people. They like to, you know, sometimes they'll make extra money. I mean, really shady wow. shit. That's so messed up. It makes yeah. no sense. I mean, look, reading through this and researching for this episode made me really sad because I loved movies with animals in them. Hotel for Dogs, for example, Marley mm. and Me. I mean... There were so many movies that I was like, wait, now I have to rethink and try to think back. Like, what was that animal's experience like filming this? Right. And it's kind of like you walk this fine line as an animal activist. You're like, okay, well, some of these movies might have been the reason why I'm an animal rights person today. Right. Think about it because they have this messaging in there. And like you with Marley and me, you fall in love with this dog and the journey of this dog and how they become a part of your family. And right. And they are family. And and if you haven't seen it, I don't want to give away the end, but they have these messages in there. So the question that I think we want to explore with our guest who's going to be coming on soon is, is well, if we can't use animals in films or we shouldn't use animals in films, what is the solution here? And we're going to we're going to talk about that because, you know, what really struck me as concerning with American Humane and with the, the phrase no animals were harmed in the making of this movie is this is a association that supports certain farms they certify mm. farms that raise animals to kill them mm. they also support pet suppliers they support animal exhibitors so like miami seaquarium where there's what? animals that have been kept there for 56 years you know lolita the yeah the whale that just died exactly it's like yeah. those animals are being harmed so like, why would we believe you when you say that the animals are not being harmed on set right it's like you're certifying these groups as well that really raised a red flag mm, right for me so yeah guys there's definitely some things to think through when watching your next movie and i'm really excited to invite our next guest on right. today we have courtney penley she is the assistant manager at Animals in Film and Television, division at PETA. And yeah, I got some questions for her. So. Yeah, I have some questions for her too. Let's get into it. Hey. Hey, Courtney. Hey. <laughs> 
Why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself and what you do at PETA? Yeah, um, like you said, I'm the assistant manager of PETA's Animals and Film and Television Division, or AFTV for short. I've been working here for about three years. I've been vegan for several years, and I wanted to combine my passion for filmmaking with my passion for animal rights, and I found the perfect position. That's here amazing. At That's amazing. I know, it's so great. I feel like the luckiest person in the world. Um, but basically, our division will works to help um, filmmakers avoid horrific incidents like those that you were talking about earlier with Ben Her, Life of Pi, A Dog's Purpose. The goal for us is to prevent productions from exploiting and killing animals, which happens a shocking amount of the time. Mm -hmm. People should not feel reassured by that American Humane stance. Animals often get hurt or even killed under their watch, like recently mm. with horses on sets of The Gilded Age and The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. And we're the only group that's tracking what happens to animals before, during, and after filming has wrapped. So we provide this free service for filmmakers. They can come to us mm. and we help ensure that they're making well-informed choices for the animals. Okay, so you're basically doing the job of what the AH should be doing. Yeah, earlier I heard you say, like, there should be, oh, does the dog die? You were talking about that, and you're like, oh, my God, there should be a website that talks about the animals that died during the filming. And, like, really, that's PETA.org. So mm -hmm. if you're curious about what's happening to the animals in these productions, like, we're the group that you should check with. We work closely with whistleblowers. So if anybody ever witnesses anything on set, they come to us and we expose it. That's amazing. So basically look for the PETA certification as opposed to the American Humane Association because <laughs> clearly- yeah, we would love doing that. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't mean shit. Right, I mean, you're just being silly, right? There's no PETA certification there in the is. movie. She just in said, a movie? You don't listen. In the movie? Yeah, the only way that we would actually give certification to any movie is if no real animals are used at all mm. because i mean that's the insidious nature of that logo right it gives people false assurances right. that animals aren't harmed ever when in reality most abuse takes place before or after the production mm. so american humane seemingly doesn't monitor those living conditions and or of the animals and PETA is looking into what happens in the complete picture so it's really hard for us to give a certification to a project if they use animals at all because that would require us having eyes you know on the at the facility on the set and then of course knowing what happens to the animals after the fact and, and realistically that's probably not going to happen so right. we can give a stamp we do have one in oh, fact wow. but we would only give it to productions that used no real animals that is good to know i i, I have a question about like what would be harm in the eyes of the ah yeah, because what are the conditions like right. in the first place? If they're getting away with all these other things, like then what is their their boundaries when it comes to this? I mean, that's a really good question. We're curious what the answer to that is too. I mean, you mentioned earlier um, that 27 animals died on set of The Hobbit and Unexpected Journey, but it received the American Humane stamp. So it's like, what is harm in the eyes of American Humane? If they deem that something has happened to an animal on set and it wasn't due to negligence, are they going to give that stamp of approval? We don't know. So don't trust the American Humane stamp. Just don't do it. I mean, is there, is, is there, so you guys don't know at all? Like there's nothing like out there in the public or under their website or their certification that deems like X, Y, and Z must be followed in order for us to give our stamp of approval. Do they have any thing like that? They have their own website, but as far as I know, I don't think that they're going to put that in writing. They're a nonprofit group. They gotcha. are not regulated by the government. Nope. They oh. really only answer to Hollywood and it's it's about money, right? So mm -hmm. if it's in their best interest to to put that a film was uh that no animals are harmed in a film because of their relationships, then th the chances are that they might do that. Well, can so, I just say, it's like they're policing themselves. This would be like Justina back in high school taking a test in her bedroom and having nobody look at her. I don't know if I could trust that. So what? Yeah, you probably couldn't <laughs> No, you can't, police, you, you can't police yourself when it comes to these things. Regarding right. wild animals, there's absolutely no humane way to use real wild animals, period. They're wild. Like there's nothing that you can do to train the wild out of a wild animal. Um, no. I don't know if you saw Nope, the the CGI chimpanzee Gordy and no. Jordan Peele's Nope. That that's a really excellent. 
scene that paints a very good picture of what it must be like mm. for a wild animal on a film set. I mean, it's <sighs> loud, it's chaotic, it's confusing, and it, wild animals are dangerous. They might snap, they could hurt you or somebody else, and they're scared. So yeah. no real wild animals should ever be used in a production. If you're working on a film set where a wild animal is being used, please contact us immediately and let us know. American mm -hmm. Humane will monitor those productions with wild animals and they will give that stamp of approval. So <sighs> contact us, wild. let us know. So what are solutions then to using animals in general? So you're saying wild animals, absolutely not, but is there a right way to use domestic animals? I would say the easiest and best solution is to just not include them in the scripts at all. So it starts with the writers, right? This is a life and death matter, literally. The animals that you see on screen are living these miserable lives in confinement and they're likely going to die in confinement or like during mishandling on a film set. So you see, that's really tricky. Mm -hmm. That's that part is really tricky because I would say a lot of even actors would say that's not true. Like I've seen this dog on set with me treated in the most loving fashion. Their owner or caretaker loves them adores them to death shows us pictures of them uh, you know like there i know a lot of people are gonna go that's not true especially from the scene that i i come from because i don't ever really hear that many horror stories personally from people who've worked with animals and i know a lot well, of other people would be upset what about if it's the actor's dog or cat like anne hathaway used her cat fat louie i right. think is his name in princess diaries yeah, absolutely. And there are exceptions, right? With right. domestic animals. Sometimes you'll see that like with Bradley Cooper bringing his dog to the set of A Star is Born or Tilda Swinton bringing her dog to mm. the set of The Eternal Daughter. We always recommend that if a domestic animal needs to be used, bring a cast or crew member's beloved companion animal because you know that they live a, a good life before and after filming is wrapped and you know that they're going to be taken care of on set. But keep in mind that when you're on set, that's like the only little snippet that you're seeing of that animal's life. And of course, right. the animal trainers are going to be on their best behavior. They mm -hmm. want you to have the impression that animals are living great lives. Mm -hmm. But what you're not seeing is what's happening to them at the training facility or what's happening afterwards. Right. I mean, there's one trainer that got caught putting cayenne pepper on dogs' noses to get them to snarl and act aggressive. Oh, my That's, God. Yeah. So if there's an, a domestic animal, cast and crew, companion animals, but please come to PETA, talk to us. We can chat about how to best depict those animals. But if an animal is pivotal to the story, especially a wild animal, then you have to ask yourself, is CGI an option? Right. Puppetry, animatronics, is there some kind of humane technology that can be used to depict those animals? And if so, you know, let's talk about it. Because I think animals are intertwined in our society. Yeah. I mean, we, we love our beloved and companion animals. And so it's like also these, these stories that are sometimes told through films connect people with animals right. and bring about really wonderful stories. But I love the technology she brought up yeah, with CGI. We have to use puppetry it. And... That's why it pisses me off when, you, when we talked about life of pi because i thought it was cgi a lot of it was but so then why even use the animal to begin with if you're going to still use cgi because they said that certain scenes they couldn't get it to work and they had to use the tiger to make the scene look realistic or i, I mean it, i don't know yeah. exactly how cgi works right. yeah what do you but look it's 2024 now right. so that explains doesn't hold up anymore right. and if you really need to see a wild animal in a film i mean there are ways to do it right, right. if cgi is not an option if it's not in the budget if it's just not going to work for your needs maybe stock footage will work right you can take that stock footage. you can even superimpose animals from stock footage into scenarios that you would never um imagine right and exactly. so and actually PETA has tons of sock footage we love to see stories about animals on the big screen because like you said people connect with those stories and sometimes that's how people get involved in animal rights because they get to see stories both good and bad right. in distressing situations and good ones but that the thing is like you have to keep in mind if you love seeing animals if you love animals and you love seeing their stories then you need to know the 
beautiful picture, right? Like right. it seeing an animal even just laying on a couch in a TV show yeah. means that that animal could potentially have been exploited in order to get to that that scenario. Yeah, and so, sure. you know, never just trust what you see, never just trust that AH stamp. Contact PETA, let us know. We right. can tell you the true story. We've, so, we've looked into it. <laughs> so what are the PETA Oscats and the awards? Yeah, so uh, we love celebrating films that do great things for animals. So our biggest celebration comes each year. We roll out the red carpet for our PETA Oscat Awards. We're like toasting to the movies, the actors, and the filmmakers that had compassionate stories. Um, in years past, we actually awarded Bradley Cooper and Tilda Swinton for bringing their companion animals to set. This year, my absolute favorite award is going to go to um, the Best Supporting Actor, The Roadrunner in Asteroid City. This Roadrunner was beautifully puppeteered. Mm, <laughs> it's cool. like, so there's all of these A-list actors in the film, and we were totally wooed by a puppet. It, you've got to check That's it out. That's amazing. So, so my question to you is, what can the public do just right off the bat to find out if a movie is ethical or not? Yeah, I guess number one is do not trust that AH stamp. <laughs> if you or um, someone you know is working in the industry and you see that animals are being used on set, then you should be a voice for them. Speak up, contact PETA, let us know, hey, there's an animal on set, whether or not you see something fishy going on, right? If there's something strange happening, you need to let us know immediately. If Even if you just see an animal, let us know. If you're watching something and it has a wild animal in it, contact us and let us know. If you are upset that you're seeing animals in a project, then you need to make your voice heard and you need to speak up for the animals. Contact the studio. Go to the social media accounts of the actors, the cast, the crew. Just let everybody know like, hey, I loved your film, but what the heck? Why was there an animal in it? That didn't add anything to the story. Right. That's but good I to know. Like, like, where's that boundary? I guess I would say thank you in advance for being a voice to the animals because I know that if you're an animal rights activist and you find yourself on set, that you're going to contact us and let us know. If something happens, right? You need to give that animal a voice. So mm -hmm. um, just real quickly, I wanted to make sure people know where to contact us. So yeah. you can email us at AFTV at PETA.org or call our whistleblower hotline where we do take your anonymity very seriously. 323-210-2233. And if you want to know um, what we think about movies, you can actually check us out on PETA.org. You can go to our socials. We just launched a Letterboxd account, which we're very excited about. Mm -hmm. So you can go there. We'll regularly post updates about the films that we're watching and let you know, you know, the real story, Amazing. like what's going on with the animals used in these projects. One last question that I have for you is how does the AH deceive us further when it comes to food. The American Humane is applying the same level level of incompetence and, to many industries, right? Other than just film and TV. They're spewing these false assurances to the public, to the film audiences, and to people that eat food. So um, I was really shocked when I saw that this footage came in from a whistleblower that worked at an American Humane certified farm called Culver Duck Farms. This was in 2022. There was video of um, an, a ducks that were injured and dying. Others were apparently suffocating and buried alive. What? There were ducklings that were being ground up while fully conscious. And that Shut company up. is still American Humane today and this is like where the really big issue is right it's possible that american humane didn't even know about these issues because the, of the inadequate oversight mm -hmm. which comes as no surprise to me because they've done this constantly in film and tv they're always sweeping sweeping instances of animal neglect and set endangerment under the rug jesus well that's kind of how you know right i mean they're their if, morals are they're nowhere yeah. they're all over yeah. the place i should have looked in i should have known this from the beginning if they're certifying you know these movie sets and whatnot i should have asked well what is the catering team first of all serving for lunch oh you know? yeah right. that's a yeah. whole other that's, story they don't give a crap way. that's they another way that our division helps filmmakers like if they want to have cruelty-free costumes or vegan sets or they need help understanding how to like get a prop that yeah. looks like an animal or cgi we can we can talk about that amazing well thank yeah. you oh so and much. you know 
I wanted to add one more thing real quickly about Please. that American Humane disclaimer. Like not only, they actually sometimes offer this modified disclaimer. I don't know if you guys have seen that, but I wanted, I know it wasn't touched on. So I wanted to mention, um, they'll sometimes say like in the credits, American Humane monitored the animal action, but they don't include that little no animals were harmed portion. Mm. And that happened with um, the 2006 film Flicka and with There Would Be Blood. Multiple horses died on sets oh. of those films. Wow. So to the average Slime. viewer, you, yeah, you I see that. that I loved it. Yeah. And it's you're horrible. like, oh, okay, this is probably okay. No animals were harmed, but there's like this variation in semantics that doesn't acknowledge that animals were like literally harmed. Oh wow. They're harmed. like, we were so, observing the death. Yeah. That's, and, and we don't care is how right. they feel about it. Well, thank you so much, Courtney, for coming on. This was super informative. Yeah. And now we're going to, you know, help the public be more careful about which movies they choose to support. And, right. Uh, and people who are on set, because there are hundreds of people on set yeah. sometimes, they now know to contact PETA. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. And again, contact us. Look us up. We're here to help. Free resource. Thank you. guys you. heard it from Courtney. <laughs> an actress and being somebody in Hollywood how has this episode made you maybe think differently well it definitely helped me understand that I can't go to the union I can't go to the resources that the sets are providing because they're all in alliance with each other which yeah. is so messed up yeah and it makes me so sad it makes me question all these animals that we talk about oh they were so good that we love them so much we, we really don't know what happens before and after, which makes me curious to know what these people who are the handlers to these animals, what their training and certification is mm -hmm. looks like and mm -hmm. what that whole situation is about. But mm -hmm. Peter's going to be hearing from me if I work on set with some animals. There are good people speaking out against this. Of you know? course. And, that, you know, we want to make this podcast episode to really do kind of a deep expose into this in the hour that we have with you. But there was a woman named Barbara Casey who fought back and actually she used to work at the American Humane mm. and she sued them mm. for wrongful termination and it was because they fired her because she spoke up about trying to have a little bit more protection for the animals on set. She was just advocating for safer conduct. It was on set of a film called Luck. I don't know that one, but that that's really scary because I I often feel that way. I mean, I'm not I'm not scared, but I know that like that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. I, there's a possibility I won't get hired for a job because of my passion for animal rights. There's a, there's a possibility that if I do speak up, they will never work with me again. And I'm personally fine with that but I could see how other people if their mm -hmm. livelihood depends on getting paid like them questioning their own moralities I mean know? people do a lot of shady shit to like, get in these movies get a buck. but that's why we need you guys to speak up and if we all work together right and we all fight back and speak up and, and offer solutions that m will make it easier for directors on set. They don't have to worry about a wild animal biting their face off. Right. Or cleaning up after them. It's probably expensive to take care of them and feed right. them. They don't, imagine just using animations or technology to recreate a scene in a movie that gets your message across in a way that is not harmful to anyone. A hundred percent. I'm on board when it comes to AI and all that stuff when it comes to saving the animals a hundred percent there's no reason behind it anyway yeah yep exactly so some of our favorite animals in movies whether it's as we were saying in the beginning bruiser from legally blonde mr bigglesworth yeah. rin tin tin is a really famous one Aww, the doggy that everybody yes. knows and we can still have those same warm heartfelt stories without actually using animals with the technologies we have today yep it's possible so, American Humane? We don't like you. You're full of shit. We don't trust you. Yeah. And if you're listening to this, what are you doing here? Go do your job. Seriously. That, that's news to me. How can you still be up and running and you're not even doing the job you said you were doing? Embarrassing. Yeah, that is really embarrassing. Yeah. I'm here to protect the animals. It's okay. Only 27 of them died. I'll turn my head while he fucking gets stomped on insane ridiculous well guys you Over know where it. to find more information go to PETA.org you can follow PETA on all platforms mm -hmm. follow the podcast just so you know J S 
Y K. I'm a little you dyslexic. did it. You did it. Okay. Comment. Let us know if you know some stories about what's happened on set. If you've been on set, or if you had any curiosities about movies you've seen. If it, they were actually harmed, you have the resources to look mm-hmm. it up to see if it was. Absolutely. And let us know what other topics you want us to cover. I'm at it's Jamie's corner, and I'm at Justina dot Justina. And you know the drill. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll. Be